my name is uh, Ambassador Mohamed Afe. I am UNHCR Special Envoy for the Horn of Africa and my role uh, mainly is to work with our operations on behalf of the High Commissioner. I do advocacy messaging with the states that have been generous enough to host millions of refugees in our region uh, and uh, help the, our operations uh, in terms of assisting the people of concern to us. Uh, the refugee crisis in Somalia is uh, it's a, it's a very, very uh, difficult situation that Somali refugees continue to face uh, because we are talking about uh, a refugee displacement that took, up, took place 90, uh, 30 years ago, yeah, since 1991. A displacement that continues uh, to happen even now. Somalia as a country continues to have outflows of uh, refugee population. And it's the world's most protracted refugee caseload that we're dealing with in the context of the Somali displacement. Uh, we have in our region now nearly over 800,000 registered refugee population in our camps and our villages and settlements in the countries that have been generous enough to host this population. And we continue to do advocacy support for them so they can be able to confront the challenges that they continue to face uh, over the last many years uh, and uh, we are uh, very happy that uh, the countries in our region, particularly in the Horn of Africa, continue to be patient uh, with this population and continue to provide asylum space to them. Somalia has nearly thousands now of refugees from Yemen and from Ethiopia. Even as they grapple with their own refugee situation in the region, they are generous, they are hospitable, and they have provided a sanctuary to thousands who have fled uh, neighboring countries in search of safety in Somalia. And we are very happy with the efforts of the Somali government in trying to make even conditions better for those who wish to return back home. Drought is a serious challenge in Somalia now. This country continues to face uh, one of the stairs, some of the largest, the largest crises that we can see in the Horn of Africa. And uh, it's been reported that uh, the current situation has not been seen in 40 years. The rains have failed, uh, the fragile ecosystem has collapsed, uh, a lot of internally displaced populations have happened, the movements have happened. As we speak, over 7 million Somalis are affected by the drought situation which accounts for nearly half a population of the Somali people. And uh, as, as, as that is happening inside the country with the massive internal displacement, we have also witnessed movements into the neighboring countries where people continue to move to refugee camps, uh, to, 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 to settlements inside the neighboring countries, as they be able to find a sanctuary and, uh, and support systems in those, in those situations. So we are very, very worried about the situation in Somalia now. A drought that can easily turn into famine, uh, which has devastating effects not only to the local population, but also to the population they continue to displace outside the country. As we speak today, nearly three million Somalis are internally displaced. This displacement continues to create vulnerabilities for the population that have been affected. And uh, with the onset of the, of the drought, this is the most affected population, already in a vulnerable situation, but now uh, put under a lot of strain by the effects of, of the drought. They are the front line, uh, really vulnerable communities that are affected by the situation. And this is what might lead to massive movement across the borders, because people continue to find support elsewhere, uh, as also they have internally uh, displacement continues to grow. So climate effects, and a lot of the people we are talking about in the context of Somalia are the lifestyle is of a pastoral nature. They are dependent on livestock, and once the livestock gets wiped out as a result of these climatic changes, as a result of drought, 
The effect of it is that livelihood opportunities are lost. The effects of droughts and the climate changes that uh, particularly has affected the, the Somali population has meant that uh, the most vulnerable communities, the, most, the people most vulnerable by the effects of this, in particular uh, the elderly, uh, women and children, uh, we are part of the international efforts that is being galvanized now in the country to respond uh, to, the, to the effects of drought. Uh, and uh, part of our response, of course, is to support uh, the governments and the regional governments' mechanism to cope with the, with the effects of, of the drought. Uh, in particular, provide resources that uh, we can be able to mobilize, uh, reconstruct livelihood opportunities, and they provide an opportunity for those affected by drought in the country uh, to manage, the, to, to manage the, the effects of it. However, this requires uh, resources. And the greatest challenge we face today is uh, resources. Our programs are severely underfunded as UNHCR, together with that of uh, the partners in Somalia. And therefore, we will all want to make an appeal to, to our partners, to the friends of Somalia, to the friends of the Horn of Africa, uh, to, to, to come in and assist the states in trying in their efforts to confront the ravages of, of drought that can easily lead to famine if work is not uh, put in and the resources are not found. We are on the ground, we are in every uh, state in the country, we are the front, part of the frontline uh, response uh, mechanism that uh, the Somali government uh, relies on. I really thank the government of Somalia for an appointment of a special envoy whose role is to galvanize international solidarity uh, for support towards the response the Somali government is undertaking. In these countries, in our region, the states have made a deliberate effort to open up their borders for those who flee uh, effects of war, but also the effects of climate change. And therefore, I'm inspired and it gives me a lot of hope when I see host communities. I'm also very much uh, gratified, really, uh, by the response that our partners give to our programs. Uh, the response has been continuous. I see the displaced population uh, not giving up. That inspires a lot, trying to make survival uh, initiatives for themselves. They take their children to school. They respond in terms of trying to create a livelihood opportunities for themselves. And in spite of the challenges that they face, either as a result of war or as a result of, or as a result of the effects of climate change, uh, the displaced population have seen, have shown us unique resilience and courage, which continues to encourage all of us who would like to help them and uh, help humanity. I've seen incredibly courageous people. I've seen particularly women who have found shelter in neighboring countries as a result of the effects of war. Some of them have, left, have, have lost their husbands, their, their partners, young people who get educated as a result of the efforts of single mothers that I have met. And this has, has really incredibly encouraged me to, to, to understand that the effects of war can be able to produce heroes and heroines. And in this particular population that I have met, so it's an amazing story that you find when you go around to the refugee camps and the resilience and the courage that particularly single mothers have shown is quite outstanding for me. Well, I think uh, uh, what I would like to say about the Somali, particularly the Somali refugee situation, is that we must all understand as partners of UNHCR that this is a very unique displacement crisis because of its protracted nature. And there is every fear that this particular crisis can be forgotten or can be brought, can be, can be taken to the back burner 
we are dealing with a fresh emergencies in Ukraine, in Yemen, in Syria. And this temptation always to focus more on the emergencies and to forget the this protracted refugee case laws that we have, in particular the Somali one, which is 30 years and still counting. So I would like to plead with the partners, with the media fraternity, to continue to shed spotlight on this particular displacement so that it does not become a forgotten crisis.